And I am is two syllables on stress stress, which the words insane explain and delight all express. A trokey on the other hand goes stressed unstressed. Words like coffee crazy giants so prepared to be impressed. But Paul, what's an anapest? Words like tambourine, cavalier, and merian, and by that I mean two unstressed stress syllables in succession. That's our first lesson. Okay, any questions? Flow like Paul. I'm going hard on that to trim it. Flow like Paul. I'm going hard on that to trim it. Flow like Paul. I'm going hard on that to trim it. This is Lit Hop 101 with MC Edgar Allan Poe. Flow like Poe. I'm going hard on that to trim it. Flow like Poe. I'm going hard on that to trim it. Flow like Poe. I'm going hard on that to trim it. If you don't know, now you know. Yo! Yo! This is Joel at Blake TV. I gotta tell you, it really hurt when I peed. But we're not here to talk about me. We're here to interview a wicked bad MC. Now bowling for soup and simple plan. An army of freshmen, just a few of the bands that he took on the road. They backed him on stage, and there's a whole slew of others. But not Jimmy Page. Not Jimmy Page. Not Jimmy Page. Not Jimmy Page. He couldn't get Jimmy Page. He couldn't get Jimmy Page to back him up. <laughs> okay, so without further ado. We're going to raise the bar, because over in the corner is M.C. Lars! Yay! <laughs> M.C. Lars, Carpe Diem. Great rap. That was very special. Yeah, I'm wicked talented, man. <laughs> hey, man, it's great to see you. Great MC to see Lars. you. M.C. Lars in the house, Blake TV. We finally got to meet you in person, man. Um, this is awesome. MC Lars, right now he is on the uh, the War of Cyborg Liberation Tour. War of Cyborg Liberation Tour. War of Cyborg Liberation Tour. Okay. War of Cyborg Liberation Tour. Um, he's with uh, I Fight Dragons and Sky Fox. Um, so pop punk bands, indie, indie bands. Once again, you, MC Lars, are the only MC on this tour. You've been the only, you're the only MC at Slam Dunk too, right? Yes, you've been the only MC on a, a lot of festivals, events, and tours. Um, is that, um, is that intentionally coordinated that way? Um, is, is that, did you guys uh, make, do that on purpose? And how is it, how do how, how you feel about being the only MC sometimes on these events? I think it, if, you know, it helps you stand out. I think people get bored if there's like 10 rappers. Uh, I've done a lot of tours with rappers and that's good too. It's just a different audience. Punk bands are more excited about, fans are excited about jumping up and down and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I, I, I think I come from a place of like the punk and rock scene. So it kind of, the crossover is natural. My first big tour was with Bowling for Soup, American Hi-Fi, and a band called Riddling Kids in 2005. So the pop punk ska stuff has always been part of my touring so, You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, are you ever going to play another show with Reedus again? Um, we did a UK tour in the spring, and I love them. I'm sure we will, yeah. They're awesome. Yeah. They're definitely a band that's bigger internationally than they are here, that's which is true. awesome for them. You know? uh, but yeah, I love doing shows with them. I, I see doing a lot more shows with them here and abroad. You've played the UK a lot. <laughs> a lot. Uh, I don't know, uh, maybe what, 20, 25 times? I think I counted the last tour was like the 20th tour, yeah, in 10 years. Do you think, um, the, the scene, my generation, the laptop, the, the rapping, is, do you think the, uh, the uh, underground rapping scene in the UK is, differs than in, in the US? Do you think there's a chronological time difference uh, in, in what's happening in the UK compared to here? I mean, so the UK was where I got my start. I was studying there and I, I did the laptop rap stuff opening for bands in Oxford and, um, that's right, you yeah. went to Oxford. In 03, and that was almost 10 years ago. And then I did my first tour that fall. Um, so, it's always been like, they've been ahead in some ways, but they're behind in a lot of ways. Like, they always get everything a few years, or a few months after, culturally. But the UK is where I got my start. And, um, yeah, I think they, the, the hip-hop scene there is interesting because it's like, they, they appreciate hip-hop, but they definitely understand and love old-school hip-hop more. Especially the people my age, you know? 
So yeah, I love touring there a lot. Live culture is there is awesome. You can play these small pubs in every small town in, in the UK. It's different than here. You know what I mean? Yeah, they yeah. love you over there. It's pretty cool, man. Yeah, that's I love it very there. cool. So you have the greatest hits. Now you have the, the, the Edgar Allan Poe EP. Which is, uh, it seems to be a, a spectrum away from, you know, this gigantic Robot Kills, yeah. and Lars Attacks, and, and, and Graduate, etc. Um, I know you're into literature, but, but want to t tell us the origin of, of the Edgar Allan Poe uh, EP. Is, is, it, is every song based on one of his stories? Correct, yeah, every song's based on one of his pieces, and then there's one song about his relationships, and a song about how poetry and rap fit together through his perspective. Um, I love Poe because he wrote with the insight of reading his stuff aloud. You know, he believed in the magic of rhyme and, and lyrics, and so he was, um, in a way, he was like a rapper because he used a similar meter, like the Raven, that trochaic octameter is a lot of like hip hop. One, two, three, four. You know what I mean? And so, like, who's that rapping? Exactly, yeah, exactly. So that inspired me. I did that Raven song in 2003 and um, it's always been a favorite of the shows so I, I covered it with the Dead Milkman and did a bunch of new songs so it was kind of fun man to do, be able to do something that uh, encapsulated that and also I call it lit hop because it's literary hip hop yeah, cool. so it's pretty cool, dope cool cool you're big into literature um, yeah what do you think um, if Poe was around today and uh, he, uh, he heard the EP and he saw the flow like Poe video which we're going to talk about in a minute if he was around, what, what, what do you think his reaction would be? Uh, I think he'd get a kick out of it. Would you guys be drinking alcohol and doing Probably. opiates together? <laughs> <laughs> he liked to party and he liked younger girls. You oh, know what he I mean? did. His co he married his cousin, she was 13, and he was like <laughs> 20. Oh, shit. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the Flow Like Poe video, that, that's, that's only been out for about six months or something, or seven months. Um, yeah. You dressed like Poe in it, you had the Raven. Um, who directed that video? That was directed by a friend of mine, Sean Donnelly, who I went to high school with. He did the, uh, the Ahab video, which is the Moby Dick song. Mm -hmm. And um, he went to NYU, and he's a great director, friend, and we've been doing a lot of stuff together. And yeah, he's awesome. I mean, we did that video so cheap, you know what I mean? And like, he's just so creative. It still looked like a lot of fun. Now, I, I don't know, you, you, you may know this, you may not. You know that that video has been shown in in classrooms, in certain classrooms across the country. Oh, wow. Yeah, there are actually some schools are showing that video in class. I'm not saying all across the country, but there are some schools, some high schools cool. where they're showing that. It's awesome. I find on that. Yeah, man. Well, you know, I love, you know, I love to teach through music. My first rap song was Shakespeare, was, was, rap, was Macbeth done as rap. So, um... It's just a natural thing, and I think that's great when it goes in the classroom. And I have a lot of teachers who come to me and kids who say they wrote papers on how my music relates to their the literary stuff they're studying. And hip hop is a culture about retelling the, sto the stories of the past in a new way. And Shakespeare did that. Like Hamlet was based on an old 12th century uh, Danish story. You know what I mean? Macbeth is a rehashing of an old story. King Lear, Julius Caesar. So hip hop is very Shakespearean. The like the tragedies, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tell, retelling the stories in a new way. Yeah. I love that. Shakespeare's been a, it's been a kind of a pivotal ingredient in the composition of MC Lars, huh? Yeah. Exactly. How old were you when you did the uh, Macbeth uh, rap? I was 16. And I'm 30 now, so I'm doing it almost half of my life. <laughs> do you ever pull that out of your uh, out of the hat? Yeah, that song's kind of rough. I I, I want to do a new version of it and rework it. That yeah. would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. That'd be cool. I want to do a Shakespeare album because he just has so much material. But the thing with with, with literary stuff is that it, it, it forces you to be in that period and so if you try to contextualize it in a pop culture context it becomes dated you know what I'm saying because like, if you tie in certain pop culture contexts it's hard hip hop is like it's everything hip hop's obsessed with newness so it's not easy to do but when it works it works you know what I'm saying so it's joyful right on my generation and the internet, you know, it's, it's a, a pivotal key in, in, the, in the music industry. And I know, you know, digital is, is, a, is a huge thing in your life, in, in, the, in digital distribution, in iTunes. But when you, when you came on the scene, it wasn't uh, too long, 
you probably witnessed the, uh, the dissipation of physical sales. You know, you were there during that. Yeah. I was working a record label, so yeah. sale, physical sales went down and down. Tower Records disappeared, yeah. and you were there to witness that. And but you seem to have very successfully, you know, you know, got into Spotify and, and the iTunes and so far. Yeah. What was that? What was that like for you? My whole thing is I, I make music for me. I never wanted to please some corporate person in an office who uh, is, they're fickle and you know what I mean? So for me it was all about finding a way to make my music and distribute it at any cost. There's a quote by Jello Biafra from his first spoken word record and I put it in all my albums. He says, anyone could have made this record, now go do your own. And that's my philosophy, you know? It's like, yes, I, ha I, I, was, I had a distribution deal and then when the record stores closed I went more digital Then I turned to platforms like Kickstarter and stuff like that to help fund and, and build my music and spread the word. But really, the way to, to make your name out, known out there is just to relentlessly tour. And, I, you know, it's like, that's the distribution method now. You can, like, I've had, I had a song on this, the, HBO sh the HBO show, Hung, and stuff like that. Like, stuff like that's good, but you're not going to get fans forever. You get a fan by hugging them and asking them about, you know, how they found out about you, what they love, giving them a poster, like, talking to them. That human connection is how you keep fans in this changing economy. And that all goes back to Black Flag and Dead Kennedys and Minor Threat and the bands that were able to get out there and build those networks and just do it. Like, some nights, honestly, this tour is great, but some nights we play for, like, we played in Yuma, Arizona, it's like probably 10 people. And that's just how the tour is. That's just, if you love it, though, it doesn't matter because you're able to sustain yourself with the creativity and you have a critical mass of people who care that the 10 people, you know, to make the money you make on that night is more than you would make during the day at a day job. So, and you're building something that you love. So it's like, it's just, it's not, it's, I've always was, I always ha have hated rock stars and like, that whole world. So it's, I've been really happy when the internet destroyed the labels. The other night I was hanging out with Sean Fanning, my friend works in the studio, talking to him about all this stuff and like it's been really, uh, it's just been a great time to come up doing independent hip hop. I feel like my timing could not have been better. If I'd been earlier, I would have had no way to get heard. If I'd been later, I'd be like, I'd have a, a day job and you no, know, there's a million ironic white rappers now. So I was early, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're you're uh, you're definitely one of the consummate DIY independent artists. Thank no, you. Don't smoke up your ass, but you That's really nice, are. Right? Thank mean, you. You know, I mean, you were up there tonight, and uh, you know, and then you run down there, you know, doing the merch too. Yeah. So you know, so uh, I between iTunes and touring, that's really sustaining you well, huh? Yeah, it allows me to, to do it and to save money and, and to do everything on my own terms and have fun. The trick, though, the trick I learned is I've, I, I often have a band, I have a punk band that backs me up. But when you tour internationally or do a smaller club tour like this, you can't afford a band. Is, is that Failsafe? Well, Failsafe played with me in the UK. Oh. I have a, a band from the East Coast that I hire sometimes. You know, I was going to ask one question, but it's the wrong thing. Punk yeah. rock, punk rock, punk rock, punk rock, punk rock. You know, uh, you you played bass in a punk rock band a while. Yeah, yeah. You know, I like to listen. Uh, when I have Pandora on, I have the Minor Threat channel on too. That's awesome. Yeah, it's yeah, a good channel. Totally. totally. <laughs> and you know what else we have in common? I'm sorry, I'm digressing. My mom is was also a librarian and oh. a teacher. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty dope. Yeah, totally, totally. Um, but punk rock is still a big thing in your life. Yeah. Would you ever? Um, would you ever, have you ever considered doing like a one-off night where you just do some a hardcore punk show? That'd be great. I mean, I've been thought about doing an album like that. I feel like my, my punk stuff is stuff that reacts to people. The Hot Topic song and the Robot Kills is hard. The Hot Topic was based on Screaming at a Wall by Minor Threat. And the uh, Robot oh, Kills, that's yeah, that's cool, like man. the arrangement's kind of inspired it's by like that. Screaming at a Wall. Yeah, that rhythm, you know what yeah. I mean? And, um, Robot Kills is just based on like every ska song ever written. So yeah, it'd be fun to do a rock record. It's just, that, that stuff is just... I started doing laptop hip-hop because I love being in control of my vision and it was inexpensive. Mm -hmm. You gotta rent a studio if you want to do punk. Yeah, you could do yeah. punk badly, but you, can, you can't really record punk badly in 2012 if you want anyone to hear it. Like DRI and all that stuff's great, but if they tried to get started now, it would be like so niche and hard to build. They just played here a few weeks ago. And I'm sure they're awesome live. Yeah. And they, yeah. me, me and Eric were like, Dude, they're still Did playing. You guys go? No, we didn't. We didn't, unfortunately. We didn't make that show. There was a band that we were supposed to shoot that night, and the guy, one of the guitars, got hit by a car. And oh, God. He was in a, a, a coma induced Oxycontin thing, so oh, no. it, was, it was really bad. But he's going to be better. Um, uh, your set list. How do you choose your set list? Because you've got, you know, Lars Attacks is so different yeah. from this, uh, like for this tour. I mean, yeah. how do you pick and choose? 
Everything's so vastly different. I know. Yeah. It's it's all about with a show like this when you're playing with punk bands, you got to make it very much call and response, and then stuff that has a visual representation. Like I have two songs. My Hurricane song is ten years old, but I rephrased it in a context of Hurricane Sandy, and then I have this song, a science fiction celebration song. I rephrased it in the context of the Disney Star Wars merch. So you just, it's like, like hip-hop is retelling the stories of the past in the modern context. Your set has to be like that. It has to be high energy, it has to be, every song, each tempo is faster than the one before, and it has to be relevant to what's happening. Because if you're like, yo, this is a song about John Kerry, people are like, what? This is old dude. I have a lot of, like, Bush references and stuff, and every time I do them, I'm like, oh, I did these songs ten years ago. So you just gotta keep it fresh. Gotcha. To make it fun. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, can you tell us uh, about... Uh, the uh, the kids television show project you work on is it done is it in the can well no we're writing a script for it and we're figuring out how to uh, produce the pilot and then where to ship it but the idea is it's four the four elements there's a DJ robot a rapper robot a graffiti robot and a breakdancing robot and they're all they exist to teach kids about hip hop and its relationship to the past and the future so we're filming it in early next year so it's pretty cool we have we're designing the puppets right now and doing the layout and. The idea is I'm like, I'm the host and these are like my friends. So, <laughs> yeah. What uh, what age demographic is it going to be geared for? Uh, we're trying to hit 11 to 14 year olds. So like middle school. You're really, you're really into uh, education. Well, yeah. Maybe revamping the education system. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I think that um, my favorite moments and, you know, I had a middle school teacher who took me to go see Rush when I was in 7th grade, and he framed it in the context that they'd done their song, their album 2112 is based on Anthem by Ayn Rand, and I read it for the class, and he was like, yo, this ties in with that, and I think that if you can teach kid, tell kids that literature is important, and history is important, it makes it stick, otherwise they don't care, why should they be there, why should the teachers care, because our, our society's crumbling, and like, just a lot of sad things are happening, and education is, is something that needs to be creatively, have life breathe into it if it's going to matter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Otherwise, like, why are we even bothering? We'll, may as well just go back to live in the jungle. You know what I'm saying? So there should be one teacher in every school that uh, that can flow, huh? Exactly. Yeah, I mean, rap, it's so interesting because rap is poetry. Not all poetry is rap, but all rap is poetry. And the students, that's such a great teaching tool. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I love that. So, yeah, I love, I've always loved educational music. You know what I mean? That's good. That's really cool, man. Um, you, you got a forthcoming second annual ugly sweater party? Yeah. What's that all about? So every year in Oakland, I do a show with MC Front a lot, and it's a Christmas show, and anyone who buys merch, I rap. I do gift wrapping and we do some holiday songs and um, it's fun because you know I grew up in Oakland and my parents moved south of there but Oakland's always been my home so we're doing a, another show there and hopefully we'll do it every year cool. at the Uptown which is a fun club and it's, it's downtown Oakland uh, MC Fonalot have you known him a long time? yeah I've known him dude like six years seven years almost we've done a bunch of tours and uh, he's great he kind of yeah he's the ner father of nerdcore he made that term up you know, uh, Eric and I, we're like, if we heard anyone say the word nerdcore at the show tonight, we were going to sort them out, you know? <laughs> but, you know, as, but nerdcore, you know, a while back, everyone was just saying, okay, MC Lars, nerdcore, nerdcore, nerdcore. Yeah, yeah. But people aren't saying it as much now. How do you feel about the, the definition? Do you think it's changed? I think that um, it's kind of defines a whole movement. I think it's kind of dated now. I mean, I think it's come and gone. I think the people who are still doing it, who people recognize, and they get that term, it's not bad. I mean, the, the biggest nerdcore song ever is probably Weird Al's White and Nerdy, you know? And that is a parody song that's really funny and good. So nerdcore doesn't have to be bad. But, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't self-label it as that. But but the website where I put the tour dates on is nerdcoretour.com. So for branding, it's something that's like... If I t use it right, it's, it works and it describes what I do. But I wouldn't self-identify as it. You got to meet Weird Al, huh? I did, yeah. yeah. He's, um, he hit me up a few years ago and we've been in touch and he's a great mentor in person. A great guy. Can't what, say enough good things about him. Well, was that one of the highlights of your life, meeting Weird Al? Yeah, yeah, definitely. definitely. <laughs> That's cool. That's That's genius. Cool. Right on, right on. <laughs> I draw these cartoons called Mooville. I want to present you one oh, of mine because cool. I love your 27th Street one. Thanks, They're man. called Mooville. I'm giving Lars an original Bay of Poison Mooville. And this wow. is for you, sir. <laughs> Much love, man. Thank you, man. Good time. Thanks, man. You, man. That was awesome. It's been very joyful. Right on. Thanks a million. Very joyful. Thank you, Lars. What's up? Yo, as you can see, this is MC Lars. You're watching Blank TV. Dangerous music for dangerous people. Building that punk rock steeple.
Peace. Tetrameter means two feet, trimeter three, tetrameter was four, so pentameter must be five pairs of syllable Shakespearean sonnets. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Now you got it. Unstressed stress, five times flow iambic. Stressed unstressed, watch me flip the dynamic leg. Once upon a midnight dreary. That's the start of my couplet, clearly Trochaic octameter Rhythm might damage The cadence is so quick But I think your ear can manage Mysterious sci-fi rhymes getting hotter Drunk in the club, watch me holler at your daughter Baltimore Ravens, that's my team Original hipster, well it might seem From the Bronx back to Boston, I'm rocking the stash Got Emerson and Twain both talking mad trash Flow like Poe I'm going hard on that tetrameter Flow like Poe I'm going hard on that tetrameter Flow like Poe I'm going hard on that tetrameter, like that tetrameter. This is Lit Hop 101 with MC Edgar Allan Poe Flow like Poe I'm going hard on that tetrameter Flow like Poe I'm going hard on that tetrameter Flow like Poe I'm going hard on that tetrameter If you don't know now you know.